Sohrab Wadia has spent more than five years performing in American Place Theater's production of The Kite Runner. The one-actor show, based on Halid Hosseini's best-selling novel, is a poignant tale of friendship and betrayal. Previews writer Jennifer Pensick speaks with Wadia about his preparation for portraying eight characters and how he quickly transforms from one to the next. Wadia also discusses how he first encountered The Kite Runner and why he thinks the story resonates with people around the world. In The Kite Runner, you uh, portray upwards of eight different characters. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about your process in preparing for this production and how you plan to tell the story on stage? Well, I've been doing this production since 2007, so it's been a good five years of doing it. And um, the original method of working on it was as you would work on any character in a show. You work, you know, if I was doing a, a play with uh, just a regular play, I would have one character to work on. And there is a process of, you know, finding that character's voice, his or her body movements, where they live, are they? Do they live in their head? Do they live in their heart? Do they, do they carry their weight? This, you know, sort of physical things, mental things, emotional things. Uh, it just so happens that if you have eight of them in a show or nine of them in a show, you work on each of them separately and very carefully, and don't. What what we did do in the rehearsal process is never rehearse two characters on the same day. Uh, my director was very careful to work only one person on one day. And he even divided up the protagonist, uh, Amir, into three people because Amir starts out as a 38-year-old man. He flashes back to a 9-, 10-year-old boy and then jumps forward to when he's 12 or 13. So there's an adult, a prepubescent, and then a teen. And all those three guys are, there's it's one person, but it's very, three very different guys. But even those three were not, I was never allowed to do them on the same day until you really can live in that body organically, truthfully. And then you start jumping between, you know, A and B, A and C, C and D, A and, you know, and then you can start playing games with yourself. Has it been a challenge for you to kind of tackle all of these characters, or have you been doing it long enough that you feel pretty comfortable in those roles? I feel very comfortable. It's very by this time, by this point, it's rather Pavlovian. You know, I have certain things that happen on stage where I do certain things to my body, and it'll just it, it the character just it, it's very simple because you can't be doing you know massive changes or putting on a mustache or a hat. You can't none of that stuff can happen because. It's very, very fast. Those changes between characters happen in, in a second. So it's all in body gesture, body posture, gesture, uh, things like that. So by, when I do that, it's, it's, it's Pavlovian. I change character very, very quickly. And even when I started five years ago, that was my goal, was to have something, a trigger, to really put me into the mood of the next person immediately. How will the um, structure of the production actually work? First of all, it starts off with a teaching artist who is also an actor, but in this case is a facilitator, stage manager, and leader of discussion. And he or she will, um, it depends on what the situation is. If, if it's skewed towards a particular aspect, are we talking, are we going to be skewing to, towards uh, literature or racial integration or bullying or the Kyvern has so many aspects that we can, we can, all of the above or none of mm -hmm. the above. So he does a pre-talk, it sets the stage up. Maybe if the people haven't read the book, discuss a little bit about Afghanistan, give them a little bit of background. And then the show starts for about an hour and five minutes. And then afterwards, we discuss themes from the show with me also present on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, he calls me back out. And we, we talk about things that affected you, what didn't, what, you know, what, what resonates, how does it change our perspective on. So it can be used as a discussion, uh, a launching point for discussions of all kinds of things. So, but in itself, the show itself in that one hour that I have on stage, the, 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 the genius of adaptation is that Wynne Handeman is a guru of New York theater. He's, I don't know how old he is now. He's in the late 80s, like 87, 88, maybe something like that. And uh, he's been teaching and around for 60 years. 
he goes off to Nantucket where he has a summer home and sits with these novels and then tries to bring them into a kernel of, you know, bring, bring them into verbatim adaptations that are only an hour long. In my case, in the case of The Kite Runner, he happened to choose the first 100 and something pages, which is the first third of the novel, which turned out to be, I think, you know, just totally fortuitously, Khaled Husseini had written that section as a short novella, which no one knows about because no one knows that. He was a doctor. The story of these two boys in Afghanistan, son of a master and son of a servant, came to him in a flash, and he wanted to write it down and elaborate, so he did. And then he took it into a writing group, and they said, this is the start of a, of a book. You should then flesh it out to what happens to these kids after this. So hence it became a novel. But Wynne Handman wanted to focus on the first third of the book because that is the nexus of the story, the, the, the story of these two boys and their friendship, their love, what happens, their parents, their, their two respective fathers, and uh, what happens to them. The rest of the story is a catapult or a roller coaster ride that happens after the story. Right. But this is the meat of the story. What do you think it is about this particular story that seems to resonate so much with people? It is a human story, but when the book came out in the middle of, um, you know, and Americans, you know, Americans are can be very myopic and very they, insular. They they don't realize that there are people on other countries. You know, we may go, we you know how we, how this we have this. Uh, like how many Americans couldn't tell you where Vietnam is on the map? You know, that's uh, maybe better now, but certainly when Vietnam itself was happening, how many of them could actually tell you where Vietnam is or Korea was when the Korean police action was going on, you know? So it, here we are in Af Afghanistan hunting down bin Laden, and we forget that there are humans there. There are mothers who died in childbirth. There are fathers trying to raise children alone as single parents. There are bullies who are, who are making hell for, for lives of kids. Mm -hmm. And do we not have those same things in South Africa or in Germany or in India? Or in, you know, uh, is there not racism and class divide in, uh, in, in the Pretoria regime or in Aborigines in, in, South, in, in Australia or... Uh, Let's face it, still in America today, you know, is there, is there not, do these things not happen? So sadly, it's there. And I think it's the universality of, of the human experience. It touches, and the story is such a, is such a, I won't say beautiful because it's a, it's a heart-wrenching story, but it's such a captivating story that it's a, it's a page-turner. Even though you're turning horrendous pages, you still want to keep turning them because the story is captivating. Tickets are on sale for The Kite Runner, October 8, 2013, at Penn State Schwab Auditorium. For ticket information, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone 1-800-ARTS-TIX. The Kite Runner includes mature themes. Parental discretion is advised.